Uh, we're coming to you from PA Biodiesel Supply. This is part two of the other movie. Okay. Um, in, in any case, the last movie, I think it's the... Uh, I even forget what it's called. People commented because my film person was smacking her gum. Okay, well that's my wife. Uh, my wife was kind of upset thinking we needed to make it, remake it because it doesn't look very professional. Guys, they're not professional, okay? All I'm doing is I'm walking you through what we do, okay? Um, it's not going to take you away from forums, but hopefully you'll see some of what we do and it'll cut the learning curve, okay? You might see my two shepherds walking through. I'm not refilming, okay? On Windows, Windows has a thing for redoing, like doing the movie, the special effects. I'm going to mess with that, so you might see some of that. But honestly, that stuff doesn't really interest me. If you want to know about doing veg oil, motor oil, that's what we're showing you, okay? Um, this is our oil right now. I haven't transferred it into the tote yet. Uh, this is like each one of these is five gallons, okay? Um, this is where we keep our oil, okay? Now, we're in the bottom of a barn. I keep it locked up. And I'm not so much worry about someone stealing it as I am someone coming in and just doing stupid things, okay? Okay, um, settling. You, you, you're not gonna hear enough about that. I take the oil from there. I pour it into the totes, okay? In the carboy, what you'll see, you'll see like the milk stuff, the stuff that is settled out. So I pour it until I get into that, and then I keep combining whatever's left. Whatever's left in here, I keep combining the containers till this is full. The reason is, I can put a lid on this, I can take it and put it out on the blacktop now. Now this is all the crap I didn't, that's from the plastic containers that I didn't pour into the tote. As the heat, it'll end up where I'll still be able to get like that much more oil off the top. The rest of it we put in a compost pile or we take it up and the guy feeds his pigs, mixes it in with their slop. Um, settling in totes, a lot of people, especially when you have a gravity system, ours or any of the competition, think you're just going to take this, put it up in the air. Okay, it's not happening. Okay, and the reason you can do that, but it's not really smart to. Okay, now mind you, let's pretend this is a filled tote. It sat here for six months. So everything down here is the contaminants in the water. Why do you want to run that through your centrifuge? It's kind of pointless. Pump off the top till you get down, because you'll be able to see in the tote where the contaminants are. Either that or drain off the bottom until you're into the oil. And even with draining off the bottom, you're still going to get a residual amount because though it's flat, how you're laying on the concrete, you, you know what I mean? It's still, but that might be the way to go. Um, but you definitely don't want to just put this in the air and start running it in. I had a customer, he goes out and picks up his oil and he was telling me that Oh, I forget how big he said the container was, but the first 30 some inches is oil and then there's like eight inches of just crap. And I asked him, do you take all that? And he says, yeah. So I said, do you, like you have a separate container? And he was like, no, why? And it was like, it's already settled. Why take it and throw it back in? I know it's a pain, but if you're picking up oil and you've gotten down to where you know it's contaminated and water, have another container that you pump that into, okay? Because there's no reason to take it home and mix it all back up so it has to resettle. Um, people ask about transfer pumps. Once the fuel's clean, this is what we use. We've got two or three of these attached to our cone bottom tanks. Um, and this one here is hooked up to fit on this tip. Okay, this is our veg oil. And this is our veg oil blend that we're running right now in the winter. We've got so much veg oil that we're, like, we quit doing motor oil for a while. Um, oh, back on the transfer pump, this is a Harbor Freight pump, $44.95, the 20% off coupon, um, plus the free gift. 
and then you can get it warrantied for I think $17. It has a three year warranty. So if that pump breaks down any time during that three years, you take it back and get a new one. My pump, this one's probably two years old. Uh, I've got pumps that are five, six years old, okay? Um, winter time hoses. <laughs> There's no way of avoiding this, okay? They're stiff. I mean, you take them out and you're, you're trying to bend them and they just keep curling back up. Um, if you take it into a room that's heated, let it sit overnight on the floor where it's warm, it'll be pliable again, okay? Um, Settling drum, I'd show you inside, but I didn't bring any lights. Uh, there's two bong holes. Okay, this is basically a barrel flipped over. Now we're going to show you how to build a settling tank. Okay, um, the bong holes are on the bottom. This one has a six inch standpipe. Okay, coming out. This one is flush to the bottom. So when I'm taking oil, it's everything six inches above. This drains everything off the bottom. Okay, um, cleaning up. You better have some of this around. Okay, seriously. Because sooner or later, you're going to spill oil. Um, we use this for veg oil. We use um, an amount of it. I think it's a green clean. What it is, is if you spill motor oil, you can put this absorbent on, then you can throw it in your trash. Okay, it makes it environmentally friendly. I have no clue, you know, what it does to it, um, but we've moved that way. And, and honestly, while I'm not an environmental nut, I live here, my kids live here. You know, we need to do things right, okay? Because pretty much everybody's cramping all over stuff. Um, I'm trying to think what else. Uh, we sell heating tanks. You'd be amazed how many people want to buy them. Uh, we try to keep our place neat. Uh, right here is our flow pump. This gauges our flow. We sell a lot of the 960 gallon per hour centrifuges. Okay, and we build uh, units with them. Uh, this lets us verify the flow we have out on a customer's job, oil viscosity, taking everything into consideration. We can put these meters on it and tell exactly what we're pumping. Oh, I think that's pretty much it. Um, guys, I really try to do the best I can. Okay, uh, there might be a part three. Honestly, a lot of times customer will ask me questions and I'm like, wow, that's good for putting in a movie. I'm not the best at explaining things. I can only explain things the way, you know, I understand them. There is a learning curve here, and the learning curve is doing oil. I'm hoping that if you watch some of the videos, it's going to knock some of that down. Do not let any of this, um, scary is not the right word, make you apprehensive about getting into this, okay? This is easy, seriously. It, it really is. Um, do it a couple times and you'll be like, this is no problem. Uh, what to have? Paper towels? Rags. Because <laughs> you're going to need them. Um, keep your area cleaned up. <sighs> Picking up oil. Storing oil. Okay? Letting it settle. These are, these are the important things that are going to give you a better product. And it's going to make it easier getting to that better product. Uh, you might see here some guns. Uh, my wife's doing a finger thing. That means wrap it up because we know long movies, unless they have naked women or sports, no one's going to want to watch. Um, these are the things that are going to make your end product just a little bit easier. Okay, we're PA, bio, PA Biodiesel Supply. Um, hope you like our movies. Thank you.